Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those new here, hi, my name is Jenny and I'm a second year family medicine resident. Um, so yesterday I asked you guys on my Instagram stories just to ask me questions. I do this once in a while just because I have time and I like talking to you guys. And I feel like every single time there's always questions about how to study, what's the best way to study, how to study with kids, how to study for boards, um, things that you should be focusing on, study strategies, basically study, study, study. Um, so I thought I'd answer some of that in this video. I made a couple of videos back when I was in med school and I'll link those down below because I still feel like those are relevant. But in this video, I want to talk about how studying in med school is different than studying in residency because a lot of you guys have questions on like the differences and how I study now as compared to earlier and how do I study now with a family and with Wyatt, a toddler, and being pregnant. So if you guys are interested, please keep on watching. Um, so I feel like your study strategy differs as you progress through medicine, and that is because your goals of your learning change, like tends to change. Yes, you continue to learn medicine, but the goal or the objective of what you're trying to learn is different at each step. So for example, when you are pre-med and when you first start out in medical school the first two years, the main important things are your board scores, your MCAT score, right? That's how you get into the med school that you want and that is how you match into the specialty that you want. Um, so I recommend this for anyone who is trying to study for a board exam, which is do practice questions. And I don't mean just do practice questions like, okay, I did 50 and that's it. No, you have to go over every single question, why you got it right, why you got it wrong, read explanations for everything. So if it takes you like an hour to do 50 questions, it should take you at least another hour to review those 50 questions and why you got each one right or wrong and understand the explanation of those because sometimes when you pick a right answer your reasoning behind why you pick that answer is not the one that they're looking for so that's the easiest way to increase your test scores um same with the mcat i took a bajillion well i wouldn't say bajillion but i took probably over 20 practice tests um and so it just helped me get into the mood and learn things. So I also think that part of the test taking is your background knowledge, right? So if you've learned the material when it is provided for you, you wouldn't have to relearn it when you are trying to study for your board exams. So I remember in med school and in undergrad, they would provide us with objectives. They always provide us with objectives. So my goal before the exam was to know everything and like concrete about these objectives. I find that a lot of us concentrate on the minute details and forget to see like the big picture because if they provide you with this objective, like this is what they're gonna test you on. If you wanna go into further detail, how I actually study for each thing, um, I would read over the, this is not always possible, obviously, because who has time in med school, um, but I would try to look over all the PowerPoints or do the assigned reading prior to going to lecture. And then during lectures, I would take notes on my PowerPoints um, or on my iPad and whatnot. And then after that, I would review all the notes and PowerPoints together and what I've taken. Um, after several days of that, and after I feel like everything has been concrete in my mind, then I would go into study groups, um, which is not very often <laughs> because I find that I had to spend a lot of time to understand the material for myself. Um, so once I got into those study groups, it was nice because we got to test each other with questions that we feel were important and what we feel that would be tested on. It just gave us a new perspective. In 
third and fourth year of med school, you go on to clinical rotations, which means that you go into like OBGYN, surgery, pediatrics, family medicine, and you rotate through all those different specialties to find out and figure out what you really want. At the same time, you are kind of studying for boards because then there is step three. I remember taking mine early to apply for residency spots. So basically the same thing. I did a lot more test questions. I learned from my preceptors. It was a lot more difficult because when you actually practice medicine, it is not the same as what is tested in the book. Just because all your patients are different, not everyone follows <laughs> like the book. If the test asks you a question and they ask you about treatment or management or whatever and you recall something during your rotations, you're all like, oh, my preceptor did this, so I think that this is the right answer. That's not always necessarily the case and so that's the most difficult part of it. You do have shelf exams for each like specialty and what I used for those to study was um, blueprints. I really like those a lot, especially the OB one. I felt like it outlined everything according to guidelines and everything that was tested on. So I thought that that was great. I also used the FM one, the pediatric one. I didn't think surgery was as good, but oh, and the psychiatry one. So I mainly used blueprints to study along with um, test questions for third and fourth year of medical school. For taking step three and now in res residency how do I have time to study with a toddler a two-year-old and plus wake waking up early and working out 80 hours a week sometimes and having a family you know living with my partner all these things all these new changes like you guys ask me all the time how do I do it um, I think that residency is a different way of learning as compared to medical school school like 180 just because the goals of my residency is so different in residency you're learning based on doing so direct patient care and responsibility for those patients and as the years progress i found that like i studied to know how to manage my patients and um, the things that I learned are the things that I want to do when I finish residency. Like in my previous video, we learned about ultrasounds and how to do ultrasounds on patients. Like that's what I want to do when I graduate residency. And so I put time and effort into that. And I'm grateful that my residency gave, gives me these opportunities. Or like just the other day, we had a skills lab where we learned about the sphenopalatine ganglion block for chronic or refractory migraines that is so simple and has such high success rates. So for med school, undergrad, all that stuff, it's a lot of like pen to paper, um, book studying, and then in residency, it's more like hands-on training. It's like that one quote. Um, I Wait, let's look this up so I don't mess it up. So I had to look this up, but it's a quote from... Confucius and it says I hear and I forget I see and I remember I do and I understand and I feel like that's a lot in residency you have so much more responsibility like these are your patients and so I remember when I first started out I was like oh my god am I even supposed to give them aspirin can they be taking this over-the-counter ibuprofen I don't know and I would just worry about pressing the order button uh, you know, because I didn't want to cause like an adverse effect or like cause complications to my patients. And because of that f underlying fear, I guess, like it, it pushes you to learn, it pushes you to be better, um, and it pushes you just to like do your own research. I've said this in multiple posts and Instagram posts, not all preceptors are going to teach you like according to the newest guidelines you know you have to do your own diligence um, just because they've been practicing medicine longer than you doesn't always mean that they are always right um, 
it is your job to go home and read every night. I think the best advice that anyone has ever given me was like, read, read every day, um, read about your patients because those like the things that you read in a textbook, eventually you forget. Like I forget things in med school all the time, but the patients that you treat, the the people that impact you, who elicit an emotion, those people you will remember forever. And those clinical outcomes you will remember forever. I still recommend reading every day just to stay up on the medical lit literature um, because medicine is changing all the time and you always want to give your patients the best care or the most up-to-date guidelines kind of care, you know? I do still do questions occasionally, but I think I'll ramp that up more when it gets closer to my specialty boards, which is in third year of residency. As for now, I just try to learn from my patients. I use up-to-date a lot. I read clinical journals and articles. Um, there's a journal club at a residency and they provide us with articles. Uh, so every time that I question something or, you know, like I'll just look it up and um, read these articles and find that understanding and learning. So I do this either while I'm on breaks and stuff in the hospital, um, in between my notes or when I'm trying to figure out what kind of care to give, or s sometimes I'll do it at home. Very rarely though, I'll do it at home just because I'm so tired. But um, yeah, so that's how I really study in residency. And I think in residency, it's so different because you're trying to learn to be a leader. I struggled this with this so much um, when I started my second year of of residency just because like I wasn't confident in myself so those are just the ways that I study and that I found has worked for me um, you might find your own way I find that I need like complete silence I need to be in the same space all the time um, but you might be a little different so find what works for you I was actually listening to this podcast by um, Rhonda Patrick a PhD found my fitness um, and she was interviewing this guy, Dr. Matthew Walker, basically on sleep deprivation and the science and research behind that. And what they found is that sleep is very important for uh, creation of long-term memories. So I did not pull all-nighters at all when I was in med school. And the studies have found that if you pull all-nighters, you actually retain 40% less information long-term. Sleep actually helps you create those short-term memories and turn them into long-term memories. They also found in the study that if you were to study in the exact same place where you're going to take your exam, you do 20% better and that's because you have like visual cues or stimulations of different things that you associate your learning to, such as like smells and sights and all that stuff. Um, but that actually helps improve um, memory retention. So I tend to, do, I remember in med school, my, my friends and I were like sniffing essential oils and stuff like that um, while we studied and we would sniff it prior to the exam or like put a little bit on our hand and like smell it during the exam to try to elicit those memories. But I thought that was a really interesting podcast and, and honestly like those are the things that work for me. So I usually study in the same spot every day in med school and I needed complete dead silence when I studied. I also found that if your brain is overwhelmed and you just become too tired, take a break, you know, because by that time you're probably not retaining any of the information you're trying to digest and then you would forget it anyway. So you're kind of doing yourself a disservice if you continue to sit there and try to struggle through it instead of just taking a 15-20 minute break, feeling refreshed, and then going back to studying afterwards. Um, so those are my tips. Um, I know it's like kind of all over the place, um, but I hope you found it helpful. Uh, 
I'll link all the old study videos that I have down in the description box down below. So if you guys got this far in the video and got through all my rambling, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Um, if you like to subscribe, I make new videos every week. Usually they're vlogs about residency and mom life, always taking suggestions. I will answer any questions you guys have in the comment section below. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.